as some of you might be aware, I myself have been, I was born and brought up in a Muslim family. By the time I got to the teenage years, I was a Muslim who didn't really believe in God. A Muslim who had basically rejected the very fundamentals of Islam. But Muslim by name, we would go to the masjid because our father would drag us to the masjid. We would run away during Tarawih prayers while the Imam's praying for an hour down on London Road and then back before the last witr. And when dad asks, where have you been? Oh, I was in the back row. I had to make wudu and then I got to the back row. We had no interest whatsoever with Islam. No interest in Islam at all. Until a period came, I was studying where I came home from school one day and I saw a small booklet on the floor. I opened the door and there's a small booklet. <clears throat> and the booklet is called, Do You Know This Book? So I thought that's a strange title. How can I know the book before I've even read it? And it had no indication that it was some, something to do with religion. So I picked up this book. If I'd have known that it was related to religion, I would have, not, I would have ignored it straight away. But I picked up this book. And in this book, and remember this is well before Peace TV and you know, Zakir Naik and all of these things where we, we didn't really have any knowledge of science in the Quran. I, was, I started reading this book and it was talking about some of the very scientific facts that were mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. It talked about how the earth went around the sun. It talked about embryology, the different stages of a fetus. It talked about the water cycle. It talked about mountains being pegs holding down the earth's crust. It talked about the universe expanding as time goes on. So being into science, I was quite amazed by this thought. The book explained that Muhammad وسلم, could no, not read nor write. Two days after reading this book, I went back to school, we were doing A-levels and I was in a physics lesson. And we had the most boringest teacher that you could possibly imagine. He was a very intelligent guy, extremely intelligent. He was doing some research and he was doing cutting edge research so that he knew things that nobody else in the world knew about physics because he was the one discovering some of these things. And obviously that made him a little bit arrogant. And I remember on this particular day, he was walking up and down. You can imagine a short, stocky fellow. And he had his trousers somewhere up here, quite contrary to the fashion today. And he would walk up and down. He'd never look at the audience. And he would play with his braces. And on that particular day, he said, he was talking about something or other. I wasn't really paying attention until he said that the universe has, is expanding. So obviously I read this two days ago in the little booklet, do you know this book? So I put up my hand, I said, sir, how long ago did we discover this? How long ago did we discover this? And I remember his reaction it was a defining moment in my life. He puffed up his chest, he lifted his head and he said, oh, it's been about 40 years now. 40 years, but this was mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. I was flabbergasted. I went home and in this small booklet, it referred to another book. It said, please refer to a book called The Bible, the Quran and Science by Dr. Morris Bukai. Many of you have probably heard of this book. So I looked for the nearest religious person. Where can I get this book? And I found my mom. So I said, Mom, where can I find this book? The Bible, the Quran and Science by Dr. Morris Bukai. 
And she said, it's on your bookshelf. She had actually put it on my bookshelf, hoping that one day I will read this book. So I read through this book and it talked about the Quran and some of the scientific miracles in the Quran. And it talked about the Bible. And I went to the various churches to find out about what they have to say in response to the claims made by Dr. Bukai. But eventually I went around in a circle, even though I was so averse to Islam, I eventually came back to Islam itself through this booklet. There's someone unknown in this story. And for me, this person is the most important person in this story. And that is the person who posted this booklet through my door. I don't know who this person is. I don't know how old he is or she is, or if they're rich or poor or which nationality they are. I don't know the education. I don't know anything about this person. But this person, by doing a deed which may have taken just a few seconds or a few minutes, posting this booklet through my door, he changed my whole life. My whole life changed. And for me, this person, what I find most amazing about this is that every act of worship that I do, whether it's a prayer, whether it's, you know, any act of worship that I do, fasting, whether it be giving zakah, giving lectures, any act of worship that I do, this person, inshallah, gets a copy of that deed. That's amazing. And I don't know anything about this person. In fact, this person may not even know who I am. But they felt the need to post this booklet through my door. And how many other people or how many other people's doors did this person post this booklet through? And imagine this person might turn up on the day of judgment because of these few people or maybe many people that they have managed to, by the grace of Allah, to help to guide by the grace of Allah to Islam. How much of their rewards has this person taken? For me, this is amazing. On the day of judgment, and this is the important point here. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Addalu ala al-khayr kafa'ilihi, kafa'ilihi, aw kama qal that the one who guides another to do good, he is like the one who did that good himself. He gets a copy of that person's good deeds. And the first person who actually did the good, no deed, no reward is wiped off his slate. It's a complete copy. So you can imagine by giving da'wah to a person, whether that be with the tongue, whether that be financially by sponsoring something a cd a book a dvd whatever that may be whether that is by physically posting or handing out leaflets or books or something of this nature if one person accepts islam brothers and sisters through this you have got a brand new opportunity a whole new life of good deeds. And what's amazing for me is that it's not just about the person's prayer or his fasting or his seeking knowledge or his giving da'wah or his doing hajj or anything of that nature. It's not just these acts of worship of the limbs. In fact, you'll be rewarded if one person accepts Islam through something you've done. You get rewarded for that very person's Iman, his Iman. What does this mean? Let's think about this. Let's stop. Let's ponder. It means when the person is sleeping, he's sleeping at night, but he's sleeping as a Muslim, you are getting reward at that time. Allahu Akbar. Because he's sleeping with Iman. He's sleeping as a Muslim. This, brothers and sisters, is what keeps me in da'wah.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in the United Kingdom, this is Moiz Bukhari from Sri Lanka. I'm very happy to inform you all that I will be speaking at the Light Upon Light Summer Conference 2015, which is to be held on the 7th of June in central London, insha'Allah ta'ala. I'm really looking forward to this event as it is going to be a beautiful conference with an amazing lineup of speakers and guests, insha'Allah ta'ala. So please do save the date and I'll see you there. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.